door slammed somewhere down the hall. A drunk shouted in the corridor before a copper shut him up. Inside the interview room three, Solomon Gray, he nodded it all. Carl Lake scrapped his chair as he drew himself up to the table, harder to do these days as his waist was expanding. He had a soft face, but Gray knew better than underestimate him. Carl Lake said something to Gary. It was just like noise. Gray, he said something to Gray. It was just white noise. Gray looked up the crack in the after ceiling where the pipe had burst last year. A blob of water hung from brown stain. He watched it as the drop hit the table. There was a strike of a lighter, a flare of a smoke flame, a crackle Carl Lake's first drag. Was a smoke soul? I want my son back, Grace. With perfect fifth of sentiment, his mind trapped in a shock phrase. A grief cycle. He felt nothing. The light had flickered once more. His fowler, his time, his pawn's star moustache, stained with nicotine. Go on, he said, yellow teeth exposed, a grin as he held out a glowing cigarette. Take it. Fowler was always one to avoid temptation. Grey didn't have the strength to argue. Smoke burst in his lungs, open the airways, it made him feel light headed. You wish he didn't have accepted Fowler's offer now. Have you made your call? asked Curly Lake. So Gray nodded. Where in the hill? He's on his way to tell us as is going with him. Going to go on his way to tell Gary. As is going with him. His wife Kate, how is she going to deal with this? Why, said Kate Carsley, in other words, Gray thought someone else's problem right now. Carl Lake had a bit of fish to fry. Is it called a running? Yep, started a moment ago, said Fowler. Carl Lake took another drag of the cigarette and the ember in a bright spark and dimly lit room and let the skate sigh escape and plume of smoke. This is an interview with Detective Sergeant Solomon Gray, present of Detective Constable Michael Fowler and Detective Sergeant Jeffrey Carl Lake. Time is... 7.35 p.m. on the 15th of December 2006. 7.35 7 p.m. Was that all? I thought that it, it should be much later. Carl Lake rested his forearms on a battered table between them. They dragged a sh- full shift and then some. A wait for the day, friction and the job lingered like f- found his body odour. Carl Lake loosened his tie, beads of sweat forming on his brow. The seat face was small, raging against the far wall, couldn't be turned down, the veil broken, and the waiting repair. What happened, so? said Carl Lake, his voice indulgent. I told Tom to be fair. It's his birthday. We know that, said Fowler. Tell us something new. Gray pulls. New to him? This is all new. A most unique motion. Perhaps the last he'd ever feel. Carl Lake glared at Fowler, who held his hand out for surrender. Sorry, so. I took Tom to the fair. It's his birthday, repeated Gray. This memory organised in a straight line. Just the two of you? A sharp nod. The original plan was we'd go as a family, but Hope wasn't feeling too well. Oh, so Kate stayed behind. We were all disappointed. Hope's only two years old. And we would have been great fun for her too. How old is Tom? Carl Blake knew the answer was, was it, for the tape. Six. He's six and... Out there somewhere and alone, Gray rose from his seat, driven to stop looking for his son again. Carl's like placed his restraining hand on his arm. Sit down, we've got we've all the boots on the ground right now, understand? I don't know. Gray nodded and settled again. Good. How that, How was that fair? What was the fair light? Gray skipped back a few minutes and hours in his mind. Bright lights, screams of enjoyment, loud music. You know how they are. Seen one is seen at the moon. Gray shrugged, slumped out the cigarette. Go on, prompted Carl Blake. I came home, left, shift over around. What? When doesn't it? True, Gray started to laugh. It sounded more like a wheeze. Kate was angry about it. it reminded me of Tom's birthday. Local kids have gone and presents opened and played with a cut. Played with. Cut Kate and demolished. She told me the only thing would be was to get home on time. What did you say? The same as every other day, like your father. Carl Lake shrugged. Why didn't you just tell me? I have to work to pay the bills. No money, no 
No job, no money, rough. we smooth, you know. I bet you went, that went down well, Gray little grimace, no. And then I didn't even get changed. I took Tom straight out, caved in, thank me. He clearly thought it was the least I could do. Tom was delighted, though. Gray smiled. He put him in a happy memory. The pleasure dropped almost instantly. It felt it were appropriate. He won a few things on the stools, went on a couple of rides. Gray remembered sitting on a roundabout and some swings. Did you hit the dodgem? said Fowler. They are great fun. First thing I head for, Tom said, shoot with light, and they thumped into another dodgem. Cod Lake frowned his brow at Fowler. Keep going, soul. Tom had been nagging me all evening about the ghost train, but we left the house in a rush. I found picked up in my wallet a short cash in the end I folded. I told Tom I had it would be the last thing we'd do when I was at uh, the home time. I was knackered. So he went on the ghost train, that's the car thing. I tried to get it out one last time by saying we were short of money, but he didn't we didn't could both couldn't ride, but he choked and moaned, catching his throat. The other two detectives waiting for Gray to compose himself. Tom was so keen, he said, to go himself, I had two voices. I, I was swear I could take him home, kicking and screaming, face Kate's wolf. Or, you know, let him go on, said Fellow, unable to keep the relief, disbelief at his voice. A kid's six years old. If I could go back and change it, believe me, I would. There's no need to justify yourself. Said Cosley. What happened after that? We accused Tom's held my hand the whole time. I felt him trembling with excitement. Can't ride. He sat down and looked so small. I almost stopped him there and then. Then the car dropped down and off he went in the darkness, a huge grin on his face. Grady stared in the middle of the distance. We didn't come out again. Not. What do you think? When the carriage came back, it was empty. What do you. What did you. What did you do? I just stood there, then I dropped everything I was holding and pushed it to the side. The dark, I fumbled away, and I couldn't find myself. Don't even a ghost. I shouted for Tom. Don't even play. <clears throat> we queued. Tom held my hand the whole time. I felt like in trembling with excitement. Carl arrived. We sat down. He looked so small. I was dropped in here and then. Then the cut bell dropped down. Off he went into the darkness, huge grin on his face. Gray stayed in the middle distance. He didn't come out again. What do you mean? His coach came back, it's empty. What do you do? I just stood there. When I dropped everything, I was holding and pushing inside. Dark and fumbled around, couldn't find anyone. Not even a ghost. I shouted for Tom. No reply. I just ran out. I just, I had run behind the light, knowing it, it, it was if he had vanished into thin air. And then a heartbeat, another, I screamed.